this video, I'm going to show you how to recognize the last five center cases for the Kurjavami skew method. Um, I've talked to a lot of people, and the biggest problem people seem to have with this method is that it's hard to recognize the last five centers. So hopefully this video will help you out, um, help you recognize the cases quicker. Um, I'm not going to be going over the algorithms in this video, just the recognition that I do. I'll have a link in the description to the website for this method, and you can see all the algorithms there. So the first case is the U-perm. Um, you have three centers that you need to switch. Uh, they can be in a line like this, but it can also be set up so they're in a swirl. Um, so, so if it's nicely set up in a line like this, you hold a solved face on the right and your initial face on the bottom, um, and then you hold it so that the uh, so that they cycle like that, so that this goes there. You hold that one in your left hand, um, so you know if you have if it looks opposite from the from those corners, if the center is opposite from those corners, you know you have it backwards. So, um, and this is for the U-perm algorithm that has just the two triggers. I know there are two on the page, but that's one that I do. So that's the recognition for that one. Uh, you can also end up with a case like this where three centers need to swirl around one corner. Um, but this is just the same as U-perm. You set it up so that uh, you, you pick a center. Let's say we're picking this yellow one. And you set it up so that it goes into the U-perm, um, so if this yellow was here, it needs to go there so that it can cycle up around like that, and then you do your algorithm, and then you have to undo your setup move. So next is the Z-perm, um, this is simple enough, there are two sets of adjacent centers that need to be sw switched, um, so you hold it like this, and you hold one set in each hand like that so that the, they're on opposite sides, not like that, and then you do your algorithm. Uh, you can also have it set up like this, so that there are two sets of adjacent like that, but they aren't all in the same layer. Um, so you're going to have to, you hold one in one hand and move the other one, so that they're set up correctly, and then you do your algorithm. And then undo your setup move again. Um, and, and the last way the Z-perm can be set up is like this, where you have two opposite on either side, and then adjacent um, up and down like that. And you have to slice through the two adjacent so that they're next to each other. And these two switch each with each other so they're next to each other. So you switch them like that and then hold them on opposite sides. And then undo your setup move. Um, and before I get any comments, yes, this cube is missing a lot of ball bearings. And no, I didn't do that on purpose. The next case is the H perm. This is easy enough to recognize because all in, in the middle like that, they're the opposite centers from where they're supposed to be and it doesn't matter how you hold this as long as there's a self center on front and you do your algorithm like that so next are the x cases um, you can recognize these because they're uh, two centers that look like an h perm it's the opposite center from where it's supposed to be on the corners there are two adjacent ones like that and the rest aren't um, so you you always know that you hold this in the front, um, and the way you can tell the A case from the B case is the top center. Um, if the top center goes down to the right, you know it's the A, and if it goes down to the left, you know it's the B. Um, so that's how I recognize that. And this is the A case because the top center goes down to the right, and so you hold it like this with the two H perm like centers in the back like that, and then you do the algorithm, which is. Like that. Um, and conversely, if the top center goes down to the left, like that, you know you have the um, the XB case. And so I I flip it so that the the two H perm centers are on the bottom back, like that, um, with a solved center on the, on the right. And you do the algorithm, which is like that. All right, so next to the swirl cases, um, these are the hardest to recognize, in my opinion. Um, and it's also because they have two rotations th at the beginning of the algs. Um, so how you recognize that it is a swirl case is if there are no opposite centers. Like the opposite of orange is red, but it's not there. Blue is 
or green is blue, but it's not there, so there are no opposite centers. Um, and after that, you look at the top color, you're holding your solve face in the bottom, you look at your top color, and then you find the center that it goes to, like that, um, and then you find the opposite center from where it is, um, so the opposite of blue is green, like the opposite of orange would be red, opposite of yellow is white. So you hold it so that the the corners where it goes is either on the right or the left, and then you look for the opposite center. So here, um, I'm holding the corners on the right and the opposite center is right there. Um, so I know it's the U case if it's on the left like that. So you do your rotation, and then like that. So next, the swirl B case, you can see that there are no opposite centers. Um, so you look for the color on top is red, and I see that my red corner is right here, and its opposite is there. Um, so the, there's, that set is on the right of the red corners. So I do my rotation like that, and then the algorithm. Uh, next are the white cases, um, and this is where there's only one opposite center, and the rest are messed up. So that's how you recognize it, is there's one opposite center. And then you hold it so that you have the one opposite center, then you'll go the top color, and the corners around which it goes, or in which it goes. Um, so the red goes there, and so my opposite center is on the left of that. That's how I recognize it. And you hold it so that you can see those two colors that match, and then you rotate around that center. I just hold my thumb on it, and I know that I have to rotate like that. I do the algorithm. So next is the what B case. Um, I see that I have my one opposite center, none of the others are. Um, and I see that there's the blue and there's the blue. And the opposite center is on the right of that. And so I rotate around that center with my thumb there. And I do the algorithm. So that's the last five centers for the Kurjava Meet Skew method. Uh, hopefully this recognition tutorial helped you. Um, so you can see which case is which faster and easier. Um, I know it's kind of difficult to understand. It's kind of hard to teach recognition. So if you have any questions or any comments or any better ways of recognizing, um, feel free to leave a comment. So I hope this helped, and thank you for watching.